It's a 51. Yeah, it's an absolutely amazing car. I mean, by the time you, you look at it this, a, a TD now would be 60 plus years old. Okay, the newest one would be 60 years old. To find one that has been unrestored, you know, that still has the original uh, dash material, at Rexine, I believe, uh, has, you know, original upholstery, original everything is just, it's just unheard of. And sure, it's used up, but. Do you love old British sports cars? I'm talking about Triumphs, I'm talking about MGs, I'm talking about Sunbeams, even Jaguars. Well, if you do, let me introduce you to Paul Deershaw because this man knows everything there is to know about old British sports cars. Here's probably the question that most people would be interested in. If you're trying to get into a, an affordable British car, what's a car that you could get into that won't you know, cost you an arm and a leg and you probably work on yourself. What, what's the one that, that you'd recommend? There's a common misconception that a cheap car is a bargain and that's in fact completely backwards. Um, the bargains to be had are the cars that are the most expensive. that might sound antithetical, but in fact, uh, what it takes to put into any car at any level to make it nicer uh, will be far more money than it would cost just to buy a better car. We do have probably the largest collection of used parts in the country. Um, yeah, we have a staggering uh, amount of uh, Parts, uh, so much so that we can't keep the majority of it here at the shop. Uh, this property we just don't have enough storage space on at the moment. So what is it about these old British cars that people love so much? Well there's, there's many things. Uh, one certainly is that they have character that's uncommon by today's standards. Uh, two is that they are very simple technology that a lot of people can get their minds around that uh, you cannot say with a modern car. Um, you know, a, a, certainly so many things about a modern car take it out of the hands of the individual to fix or understand. All right, to be honest, I did find one thing that Paul didn't have an answer for, and that is, why in America do we call these the bug-eyed Sprite, but in England they call it the frog-eyed Sprite? And the other thing is, there's a car that doesn't belong here. See if you can find out which one. say that we work on cars that I like and uh, there's some models of cars that we certainly could repair but I gotta tell you XJs don't do it for me and so we don't do XJs we don't do Range Rovers we don't do a lot of stuff that maybe we should but it, it just doesn't turn my crank so we just won't go there we were talking earlier there was something like a thousand cottage industry companies in Britain that produce cars so there's just a plethora of crazy different, you know, almost hand-built British cars out there. Absolutely, and those are the ones that tend to cause the most grief because you don't have the support system. Uh, you know, an MGB, made they made over half a million over the course of 18 years. Well, by American standards, maybe half a million doesn't sound, by, sound like very much, but, you know, by the standards of what we deal with, that's it's enormous. Oh, there are other models that I've shown you in the shop here that less than 200 cars were made. So, you know, one of the basic things that you need to restore a car is information. Uh, information is the number one most important commodity. So, 
you know, an MGB or a TR6, it spoils you to death at how easy it is to obtain whatever information you need to know. All right, so here's my gotcha question. Every journalist has one. What car do you drive? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, okay. Uh, I see, I got you. Well, you did, yes. <laughs> um, I drive a Nissan pickup every day, <laughs> and it's because if people ask me what I do for a living, I move stuff. Um, that's really what I do, is I just move stuff. So, it, by fault, it's got to be a truck, sorry to say. <laughs> and the Brits didn't build a lot of trucks. <laughs> well, you know, oddly enough, they did, uh, but they didn't make it to the U.S.